This is so exciting. I met Renee in Texas at um, Kelly Swings Summit. Um, she is into protecting the environment in the hair salon industry. And Renee came from the UK to speak there. And I was enchanted by him, as was um, my little core group that met in Santa Barbara a couple, oh, is it a year now? Yeah, it is. Um, Eileen and Pearl and Katrina and Kelly. And so we were all like, wow, Renee has some unbelievably interesting things that you wouldn't know about. Like I learned that this is not always a good thing to say in different countries like South Africa and some Oriental places. And I'm sure Renee will speak on it. And this is his book. And I was reading about nail biting, as a matter of fact, just when this opened, because I was a terrible nail biter when I was in, gosh, a kid up to my 20s. And I probably should have read this before, but I think it says uh, thinking, brooding, or being lost in thought or can generate uncertainty and nervousness. Yeah, I was there, you know, moving every two or three years of your life could do that. And um, I got cured, actually, of all people by Eileen Ford. I went in to see her and she said, ah, she called me Cindy. Cindy, you're a very pretty girl, but your nails are disgusting. So you go get a manicure once a week and come back and see me in three months and I'll see what I can do with for you. Okay. Ever since then, saved. And I don't want people to think I'm nervous. And there was something else about it that it said, like, what else was it? It may cause unconscious nail biting. Or if a lie is being told, it's often associated with nail biting. And I don't tell any lies, so <laughs> not intentionally anyway. <laughs> So thank goodness I got rid of that habit. And I don't know what you guys are doing, but you might want to find out more about this. And so Renee, where are you now? Are you in the UK? Can we bring in Renee, Hi, Cynthia, our Cynthia. feature speaker? Woohoo! <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that. It was a, an honor and a privilege to meet you in Dallas. Um, I really, I, I can't wait to to get back in, in, in the U.S. And, and get back in touch with you guys because it was an extremely beautiful time in Dallas with the ladies you mentioned with uh, with Pearl and, and Kelly and, and Katrina and you and, and Eileen. And then it was like, oh, my God, never had have so deep, so such deep conversations with so much value. Uh, it was it was amazing, a really amazing, amazing time. And right now, um, to answer your question, I'm in London, in the UK, in the United Kingdom. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to get back to uh, the US. And pretty soon I'll be back in the US. So uh, yeah. Yes. You're coming in September to Eileen's Avocado Farm. Yes. Is that when? Or August? Uh, the beginning of August, 12 and 13 of August. August. I'll be at Eileen's Farm, uh, two-day certified training. And uh, yeah, I so look forward to that. It's to meet you guys back. I mean, <laughs> what can I say? Santa Barbara is beautiful. And if you go to Renee's website, you can log in and see that because everything there is first class and exquisite. And then you can meet him firsthand and get your book signed. Heck. Yeah, absolutely. Renee, many of the audience doesn't know about you. Can you give yeah. a little bit of your background? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, the background is, is very simple. Um I had amazing parents, uh, but I got bullied in school like crazy. I didn't want to go to school in the morning. I couldn't run fast enough home crying. And school for me was was like not really my my, 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 my cup of tea um, because of the bullying. But then I turned 17, 18. I said, you know what? I'm going to prove myself to the world that I am somebody. And if this, this is the biggest mistake we can make is prove to the world who you are. You have to prove yourself to only one person, and that's yourself, right? But I, I had that, you know, I was not that um uh, enlightened yet <laughs> with all these uh insights and i was going to prove myself to the world so i joined the navy and everybody said renee this is not for you you're good for nothing who do you think you are and 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 i said wow and i joined anyway and i said wow you're lucky i said yeah sure and uh you know we all have people around us that say yeah you're lucky there's no luck attached to it it's just determination and and do whatever you have to do and then all of a sudden i saw people walking around with stars and stripes and i said wow wouldn't that be amazing to become one of them and uh, I went back home and as, as exciting as I was, 
I mean, I'm always excited about what I do. I'm very expressive. And and uh, and I told everybody I'm going to become a, an officer. And they said, yeah, yeah sure, sure, sure. Can, can't you keep well, can't you keep yourself where you are? Can't you be happy with what you have? I mean, why would you always want to more? You want more. You want always more. There's always something more for you. And I said, yeah, of course. Why not? Yeah, but if I would be you, we all know people like that, right? If I would be you, right? And I joined anyway and, and applied anyway and got in. And before I knew it, I was an engineer in building bridges and roads coming from a basic diploma hotel school, which is pretty awesome, if you ask me, because I love cooking still today. But I uh, became an officer in engineering. And uh, that was an amazing, amazing, amazing time. Uh, but then I saw people jumping out of airplanes and I said, wow, that's something. This is me. This is my story. So I applied and people again, Renee, they're going to drop you in war zone. You're going to get killed. Why would you jump out of an airplane? I say, I don't know, but it's, it seems like, like to be funny and, 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 and energetic and, and I want to do it. And, and before I knew it, it was, I was hanging in the air with a parachute on my back. <laughs> and I said, wow, isn't that amazing? The armed forces I had an amazing time. And, and people say, well, you, you're crazy. I say, oh, no, thank you. I've been born like that. Don't worry about it. And, and then I saw one day I was sitting on my hiney in one of these big logistic aircrafts. I don't know if there's anybody in the crowd or in the, in, in the audience that knows these C-130 Hercules aircrafts, the big logistic aircrafts. And I was sitting on my hiney waiting for, the, for a jump. And, and in those aircraft, there's no doors. There's no nothing. You can see the pilot. You can see the navigator. You can see everybody in, 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 in the aircraft. And I was looking at a pilot and I said, gee, wouldn't it be something to become a pilot? And I went home. Wow. Cynthia, you don't want to know what happened. I went home. I told everybody, this one is going to become a pilot. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Can't you be pleased with what you will have, where you are? You, you know, you have to study for that, Renee. I said, I know. And study was not my forte at all. I didn't like studying at all. Applied anyway, got in. And before I knew it, I was flying my own thing. Thing is, I was always convinced about the fact everything is possible in life, but you have to put your mind to it, right? Right. Now, I went on and on and on, and on for seven years. I said, this is it. It was an amazing time. Would I do it all over again? Absolutely. But it is time for change. And uh, I got from being in the armed forces, as an engineer, flying, jumping, becoming a truck, a truck driver. But I, I wanted to experience what is it to be a lorry, a truck driver? I don't know how you call it in the U.S. Is it lorry or truck driver or? I think it's truck driver, but truck driver, yeah. So these big lorry long has a better yeah. sound to it. <laughs> well, in some countries they call it a hoot, and in other countries they call it a bonnet, right? The, the front thing of the car. But yes. um, the thing is, I saw the whole of Europe from behind a window of a truck. I was amazing. I loved it. It was hard work for sure. It paid very well in those days. And but it was an amazing adventure. And after four years, I said, this is not life. It was amazing. I have a lot of respect for truck drivers today, more than ever. But that's not life. And I started my own company, my own little company in personal development. And I didn't take off right away. I mean, and on the contrary, I went down, 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 down. And, uh, and, and I said, you know, I, I want this to grow. I want to become great. I want to be known. I want to be. And I started working hard, working hard. And I went even more down. Until I bought my first book from Tony Robbins, Notes from a Friend. It's a very tiny book. I read it in like less than two hours. And I said, wow, I'm going to work with that dude. And everybody <laughs> said, Rene, that's not going to happen. He's a multimillionaire. He's a, he's, he's, who do you think you are? He's going to make time for you. I said, I don't know. I just have that feeling. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then all of a sudden, I got approached by people that I've known very well. And today, they're very dear friends of mine. Rene, there's a body language seminar. It's for free. You have to go. It's inspiring. It's amazing. It's a, I said, shut up. Body language, that's for hippies and definitely not for me. That's the kind of attitude I had in those days. <laughs> body language, come on in. You guys go, come back and tell me what you saw. I was delegating. I was already an entrepreneur in those days. You know, you guys go, you come back and tell me what happened. And they said, no, you're coming with us. And they're coming with us. And in fact, long story short, they convinced me. I went, best thing that could ever happen in my entire life. I was nailed to my chair. I was listening. I was inspired. I was saying, this is it. And today has been my bread and butter for many years. And I said, wow, body language. And, you know, and then all of a sudden I went to my first Unleash the Power with him with Tony Robbins. 
-hmm. And I said, what's wrong with these people? They're dancing and singing and so energetic. And I mean, what the heck is going on here? It was my first hour at a UPW. I was in London. And but after half an hour, it was as crazy as all the rest, and and that was an amazing. Experience. <laughs> I mean, well, I don't have to explain help that. It. Right? It's the, it's, it's, yes, it's in the air. Like, whoa. yeah, yeah, it was so amazing. I loved it. I was like, and I said, well, one day I will work with the guy. And a year later, I went to a Yes Group. A yes Group is a is a, an organization who keeps the momentum of Tony Robbins high on a monthly basis. And they have yes groups in London and the UK. They have them in Belgium. And I went to one of these yes groups and there was a Portuguese guy uh, running the show. And afterwards, we met in the lounge at the hotel. And he says, uh, how did it go for you? I said, amazing. Did you learn something? I said, not really, because we're in the same industry. And he said, wow. Also, can I ask you a personal question? I said, of course. He says, how many years have you been smoking? And I said, excuse me? And in those days, I was, Cynthia, in those days, I was still a smoker, right? And but that day, I did not smoke because I didn't want people to smell I was a smoker. It was the worst day of my life. If you used to smoke every day a lot of cigarettes, and then there's one day you don't, sm it's 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 hell. And um, anyway, and I we we continued the story, and he said to me, "Listen, I have something very special for you. There's only eight people on the planet that have that opportunity." And we are missing one. We're seven now. According to what you told me about the forces, about this and about that, can you prove me what you just told me? I said, of course. He says, okay. We're looking for somebody like you. I said, okay. Cut the crap. What is it? And he says, I can't tell you. It's for non-smokers only. And I was like, nah, <laughs> come on, man. So I, that night, I promise you, I promise you that night, I drove home. I was sick of nervous. I was nervous. I was like, I smoked like a chimney driving back home. It was a two-hour drive from Brussels to my home. And I was like, what the heck? And I knew it. I felt it. I was like, he has something. I have to have it. And it took me three months. And I quit smoking cold turkey called the guy and said, listen, Ricardo, Ricardo Mendoza, he's been a bodyguard for Tony Robbins for, me, I think, for 15 years. And he's a Portuguese guy. I said, Ricardo, it's me, Rene from Belgium. And he went like, oh, my God, my friend. I said, stop. I just want to let you know I quit smoking. And he says, I don't believe you. And I said, excuse me? I said, listen, buddy, when I take a decision, there's no way back. He says, OK, I believe you. I'll send you an email. Respond to the email. Let's see what happens. And he puts the phone down. And I was going to ask, what do you have? And I called him back and called him back and he didn't pick up the phone. I said, man, he got me so, I don't know if he can feel what I feel right now, but, and then after 40, it took him 14 days, two weeks to send that email. Ooh. I got the email in and the subject was application for personal bodyguard, Tony Robbins. And Ooh. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. So I, I filled in the whole paperwork, sent it back. And a couple of weeks later, I was working with Tony. And I remember myself in 1995 saying, one day I will work with that dude. And it is so important to understand, Cynthia, that what you put out there, when you're ready, you'll receive it, right? So a long story to a short question. <laughs> oh, no, that was fantastic. Shows yeah. you from Eric's introduction how resilient you are. And... The people around you, you have to have a stronger circle, those limiting beliefs. That's the death of many a great dream. Yeah, hey, guys, absolutely. Think about it, right? Right. You're going for that little pearl, that little seed inside you because get strong people around you. Make your mastermind, make your little group really strong so that you can keep yeah. flying and swimming in the ocean. And, and then after after two years serving Tony as a bodyguard, what happened is that I got in contact with the, the organization who promotes him. And I started chasing the owner of that company. And after a year, I went to that owner and I said, listen, I am sick and tired of chasing you. What they went, I went. And they said, Renee, well, what do you want to tell us? I said, I'm sick and tired of chasing you. Are we in business or not? And the lady said to me, Renee, don't move. She came back with her PA, took all my information. Renee is our new, sp no, our new speaker on board. And that's the day I started not being the bodyguard for Tony Robbins, but representing Tony Robbins all over the planet. So I made a shift from bodyguard to speaker for Tony, spoke in Australia, 
uh, in, in, in the Far East, the Middle East, in the US, you're most of the time in Europe. And I was like, wow, how, how things can shift in life just by being persistent, never giving up, and believing in what you stand for. Even though if people say this is not for you, it's not going to work, who do you think you are? No. And that is, yeah, that's part of my story. There's a lot more to tell, but I'm going to speak. Asking you. for what you want. You ask for what yeah. you want. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. 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 So what motivated you? What motivates you to do what you do? Um, what motivates me is that I see so many people in life struggling. Um as well, and especially now in these days, and but mental health issues and 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 the, the reason I went to the summit is to show people through body language you can, you can enhance somebody's life. Uh, you can you can give them tools, you can give them um, insights about how does the brain work? Why do we do what we do? Why do we express ourselves in a certain way? Um, and if you use all of that information, your your life will be going in, in, in a far more positive way. You can live life on a far more higher level of consciousness when you start applying the, the, the techniques and, and, and the insights of body language. People underestimate body language a lot. The, there's a professor that once said in the 50s, his, his name is Albert Mehrabi, and he said, 93% of all communication, 93% of all communication is nonverbal. I said, huh? 55 is body language. 38 is the tonality. And I said, how many people do pay attention when you speak to somebody? How many people among us here and the, one who, the ones who will watch afterwards do pay attention to their tonality when you speak to somebody? Not even 1%. Mm -hmm. How many of the people pay attention on the planet of society to their body language when they speak to somebody? Not 1%. And it's 93% of all communication. If you know how that works, and that's what, what is my purpose, because to come back to your question, what, what inspires me is to show people these techniques to enhance their own life in the first place. Right? And, and, and it's, 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 um, it's inspiring when people call you after a seminar or a workshop, say, hey, Renee, I applied this and this and this. Guess what happened? I said, I know that's the purpose, <laughs> you know? And it's, it's, it it's gives you, as, as a trainer, it gives you such a good feeling that you can actually show people certain things and then they use it because that's a very important one. You know, you can go to seminar after seminar after seminar, but if you don't use what you learn, it's a very bad investment if you ask me. But when people use what they learn, it's amazing. And for, for me as a trainer and for other trainers as well, I guess when you get that phone call, people saying, hey, I use it and it's working. I said, wow, that's what inspires me the, the most, helping people out with this. That is fabulous. And even our listening skills aren't as good. Can you teach us a few things? Like I have a burning question. Like I do thumbs up all the time. Yeah. What would be a better thing to do? So universally, I'm not offending anybody. Um, well, depends on which country you are. If you, if you go, if you dive a little bit deeper into body language, you can use thumbs up everywhere. There's a certain amount of countries you don't use it. For example, in Bangladesh, you don't do it. It's very offensive. And I told that story in Iran when I was in Tehran in Iran for an oil company. And I said, uh, if you do this in Bangladesh, it's very offensive to say, well, can I say something? I say, yeah, sure. In Iran too. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm still learning myself sometimes. But the thing is, what I can give you as a, as a good advice um, is that if you are in a certain country and you don't know what to do, the do's and the don'ts, ask the local people. Ask the local, local people, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? For example, when I went to again to Iran, my first question, are there do's and don'ts in this country? And they said, yeah, don't go into politics. Don't go into religion. You'll have the time of your life. And that actually happened. When I went to uh, another country, they say, don't do this, don't do that. If you go to Japan, a, a Japanese lady, she gave me a business card like this, like this. And they mm -hmm. bow, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do? You do the same thing and you accept the business card out of respect. These are the things, you know, you ask the local people, what are the do's and the don'ts? So if you don't know if you have your thumbs up, if that's a good thing or not, just ask the locals. Or what you could do too is study. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Study the book. <laughs> and, and you know what? He's got really cute. He's got... um 
500 something pictures so you can see exactly how it looks. Then he has like a little write up about it. And then he has the questions. What do you see? What is your gut feeling telling you? You know, I've, I've lived on my gut. I've done pretty well. <laughs> yeah. But I would really like to fine tune it. And I bet our listeners would like to know what's that thing? If you're lying, you look to the right. And if you're telling the truth, you look to the left or vice yeah. versa. I don't remember that. How does that go? It's um, so if you can see thumbs up, for example, definition, good, okay, or asking for a right, an insult in Australia, the Middle East, Greece, Iran, Sardinia. Look, the thumbs up is in the book, too. Look at that. Everything you need to know. Yeah. I got to so, study that one. <laughs> so you were asking me, Cynthia? Can you? Uh, yes. Um, well, why don't you, if you were, if, you know, you said something about, or the world always says, if you look to the left, you're telling the truth, or the right, you're lying, or vice versa. Tell truth. us a little bit about that and how that works. And yeah. what people should be aware of, because it seems, I just go and I figure I'm always telling the truth, so I'm okay. But it's good to know these things. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Um, what what is what is related to to the eyes going left or right? You do have to realize that we have a right brain and we have a left brain. Now, I don't know how that comes on the screen here. If I do this for me, this is my right. If that's your left, that's my right, right? I don't know how right. if you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is my right. So this is L, my left. Do L for left. That way we'll know. Um. So left. This is my left. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and this is, this is your my, left, right? <laughs> but this is my left. So okay. my left brain is my rational brain. My right brain is my emotional brain. My emotional brain is connected with my left eye. Ah. So it's diagonally. Ah. My left brain, rational brain, is connected with my right eye. How do you remember all of this? Remember one thing, Rolls-Royce. And you go like, huh, Rolls-Royce? You know the car, the car brand? Yeah. You all have your pens out? You're taking notes? Yeah. Rolls-Royce, Rolls-Royce. So Rolls-Royce, why Rolls-Royce? The logo of Rolls-Royce is RR. I don't know if you ever saw the logo of Rolls-Royce, it's RR. Yeah, of course. So why would you remember that? Of course, what are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> have one in the back anyway <laughs> so the why would you remember rolls royce rr your right eye is your rational eye and that's the only thing you have to remember right rational rr rolls royce so your right eye is your rational eye okay if your right eye is your rational eye obviously your left eye is your emotional eye okay now your left eye left ear and left part of your body is your emotional part. Your right eye, right ear, right part of your body is your rational part. So if I would ask you in front of an audience an emotional question, what would I do? So if this is left, right, mm -hmm. I would do like this, turn my head into the crowd. So I'm showing my left part of my body, my left ear and my left eye, and I said, hey guys, where are the holidays going this year? An emotional question. Or how are the kids doing? Or what is that new car you just bought? Something emotional. Left, left part, left eye, left. I'm exaggerating right now just to make my point. Mm -hmm. Now, if I have a rational question, what would I do? I will turn my body this way, show my right part of my body, which is here, my right side. Look with my right eye to the audience, show the right part of my body and ask a rational question. How is the agenda for next week, guys? I really want to know today. I want to know it in one hour's time. And, and no discussion possible. Thank you. See you in an hour's time. You show your right part of your body, a rational question. Okay. So right, rational, left, emotional. Okay. Now, why ha what, ha that's the, what has that to do with the eyes going left or right? When I ask you an emotional question, hey, can I ask you a question? I will not say an emotional question. I would say, hey, can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah, ask me anything. Okay. How, will, how was that trip to Egypt last year? And people go, oh, wow. Oh, it went like this. It went like that. Yeah, sure. And I remember, so they look left. Emotional. So they remember something. It's a memory. It's an emotional thing. If they would say, well, we went last year, rational, right? 
they are making a construction of something. What they should remember, but they're making a construction of something. So this is not a lie. However, it's a red flag. Because if, if, it's, if it's a memory that you should remember and you're making a construction, why would you make a construction of something you remember? So that doesn't make sense. But it isn't a lie. Let me tell you why it is not a lie. It is not a lie because you might have been so busy that day and you have to make a construction of something because the head is full with information and go, oh, yeah, that, oh, how did that go again? That you went, but it's a red flag. Now, my point is if you have too many red flags, one after the other, that is sometimes, well, that can be the, 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 the proof that somebody's lying to you. Okay. And if people look to the right or they look to, look to the left, it's not, it's, it's not because it's left or right, it's a lie. It's about if it's a memory or a construction. Okay, so right construction, left emotion, a memory. Does that make sense? Yes. Does it make sense to the audience? Is there anybody has a question because this is a very important one. Uh, let, let me give you an example. I was talking to a lady and I was coaching her in London. And uh, I said, hey, how are you doing? Have a seat. Did you have some coffee? Okay, let's have a seat. Let's have a chat. Um, tell me what's going on. And she says, yeah, Renee, I want to talk to you because uh, my relationship with my guy, blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, each time she said something emotional, she looked to the right. Each time she said something rational, she looked to the left. And I stopped there. I said, stop. Stop lying to me. And she started crying. I said, why are you crying? She said, well, yeah. I said, well, yeah, what? But how do you know? I said, well, who's the coach here? <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for so many years. I said, stop lying to me. You know what? No harm done. But if you keep lying, I will stop this coaching session because it's a waste of your time, a waste of your money, and it's a waste of my time. We're not going to get any further like this. I want you to tell me the truth. Or we stop. We have another good coffee. And I go home. And she started crying even more. I said, listen, stop crying. What's going on? Tell me the truth. And from that point forward, she started telling me everything in, in depth and the truth. I could see it on her eyes. I could see it in her movement. And that is why it's so important to, to, to not only read body language from somebody, but to also pay attention to your own body language. And when you pay attention to your own body language and you can read somebody's body language, then you can start using these techniques to moderate a conversation. And a lot of well-skilled business people use body language to moderate conversations, to steer it in a certain directions to get to the end goal they want to achieve. Ooh, brilliant. Do know one thing. This is a very important one. People say, can I use body language for everything? I said, I know what you mean. Yes. Yeah. Do pay attention. Karma will come back to you. So if you use it for the wrong reasons, you'll get it back. Do remember that. Because there's people like, um, there's three types of people. It's very, very uh, difficult to read body language. The first type of people is people who are professional artists, uh, um, actors, right? Oh, they, yeah. <laughs> they act. It's a profession. So... There's, sometimes it's very hard to read their body language. The second type of people who is where it's very difficult is that people who change the state of their body through alcohol or drugs or high uh, use of medication or, you know, they change the, the, the structure of their body with different chemicals, right? Alcohol is a chemical, uh, tobacco, uh, drugs. So the, chem, the, the body changes. So that body, that body language is not really real, right? And the third type of people, and that's my whole, that, that's a very important one, are narcissists. They use body language unconsciously to get what they want. And they believe whatever they say, they believe it's so strong what they say. So their body language adapts to what they believe in. So it's very hard to read their body language. They believe in their own lies. Let's put it like this. So they believe in their own lies. So because that belief is so strong, the body language adapts. Because normally spoken, the body will never lie. Always remember, your body will never lie. 
but narcissists are so strongly wired <laughs> right that the body accepts it as it as the truth because they believe it so strongly that the body says okay this must be real this must be true that's why reading body language from a narcissist is super 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 difficult i know how to do it because i know the technique you know how to do it. i yeah these we call that micro expressions so when the body has certain movements and the body movements adapt to uh, the what the body believes and it's a narcissist, the, the micro expressions will never lie. So the micro expressions is, for example, somebody who is disgusted about something, somebody who is contempt, somebody who's happy, somebody who's sad, somebody who's angry. You can you can read it from the micro expressions. Micro expressions is a one full day, eight hours course. So I'm not going to spend eight hours here explaining how it works, but no, but oof, wouldn't you like yeah. to know that, guys? Wow, that will find two micro expressions. Life. And there's a lot of information on the on the please. It's especially actors; they could even up their game, go get an Oscar or Academy Award because they'd be the character. Yeah, like, and boom, you know, body yeah. that, that character would come in them, and they could phew, just a thought, True. guys. True, true. Please, anyway, it, this is spellbound, the information. <laughs> it's, it's even a fact when I watch a movie, and it, it's because it's my profession. I've been in this now for 27 years. When I watch people acting, I always think like if they only had went through a body language course, it doesn't have to be mine, but a body language course, they would act so much better. Their, their performance would, would, would go through the roof. And I see actors sometimes say, Oh, honey, I love you so much. They should say, I love you so much, right? So I'm exaggerating again to make my point. But when, when they say yes and they not no, there's an there's an, an incongruency, right? It doesn't match. Yeah. Wow. And, and yeah. I'm gonna have to invite you to my acting class too. Oh my gosh. Glenn Morshaw would love this. Yeah. He is, he is this, amazing. This... He's amazing. You'll have to come speak to his classes. There's four. Okay. Right out. <laughs> I'll be I'll be back in the US. Pretty, pretty this is, or or you do one and I have everyone come to that that session. That would work yeah. well better for you. <gasps> wow. You're just adding so much to us. So much, so much, so much, so much. So what does a typical day look like to you? Do you walk around looking at everyone's body language and reading them? Or or does that no. it probably never stops for you? It's probably just like breath. No, you know. How should I say this? Uh, and I'm not looking left or right now. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still right. <laughs> no, but what what is a daily in in terms of body language? I I I don't really read body language on a daily basis. Um, when do I really read body language if it's necessary? For example, let me give you an example. You are meeting with somebody and they, you never met them before and, and they want to have a chat about you. For example, a salesperson, they want to come and sell you something. You made an appointment. It's a, it's a big sales. You know, you want to see people face to face. And and then all of a sudden you go like, yeah, something is off here. Something is not really, I don't know what it is, but I, I, nah, I don't know. When that happens, when my gut feeling says something is wrong here, I start reading like 100%. But if you would read everybody's body language 24-7, you go nuts. I promise you. <laughs> You'll go nuts. But because I, I used to do it in the beginning of my career in, in terms of the body language. And I saw so many signs and so many I said, oh, I have to stop doing this because this doesn't, doesn't make sense anymore. When I was in Tube in London, the, the underground, right? The, how you call that? The, the metro or? Or subway. Subway, yeah. Uh, for me, that was like a kid in a candy store. You know, every, I was watching everybody. <laughs> I was like, okay, look at this person. Wow, this person. Nowadays, you can't do this anymore because everybody's on the phone. But um, I mean, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> But it's it's a fascinating What's the body language. You could probably read yeah. it it's from their face, just like oh, God. <laughs> and, and and there's so many signs that you that that are that are explaining so like like uh, social distancing, right? We had COVID, we had you know, and there was social distancing, but that is in fact something that exists as well in in in, in normal times as well. Uh, if you if you're in an airport and you go sitting right next to somebody, and there's a lot of space. 
and all the other seats and go right next to them, you know what they're going to do? They're going to stand up and go one one further because they are like they're feeling attacked. You're entering their zone, their personal space. Personal space is so important to respect that. I used to have a guy working in my car and um, in the in the in the in the how you call that in the shop in the car shop. So you know, changing oils and all that thing. And he he would approach me and like this. If I had a person like that approaching like so close, and I said, please. Right. And, and some people don't even realize it. And, and, and personal space is so important to respect that as well. It's, uh, but there's so much things you, I would like to share, but yeah. You can, but you know, especially if they have bad breath, you're like, oh yeah. I meant. <laughs> I speak, oh, people who drink alcohol or have like garlic the day before or whatever. Oh. It's, I was like, oh my God. And I love garlic, by the way. <laughs> that is not the point, but it is, yeah. So yes, personal space is so important. I mean, Trump, for example, Donald Trump, uh, I'm not going to express my feelings about Donald Trump, but he had a special way of shaking hands. He would grab your hand and shake it and then pull it in. There's millions of videos on YouTube about that. And it is so arrogant and so dominant. And in, 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 I don't know if, he, if he's even aware of it, but shaking your hand and pull them in. A technique when that happens is that when somebody does that, you turn your hand. So you, ha you have a handshake, they give it, and they want to pull it, and you do like this. They go like, ah. So they, they shake your hands, and they want to pull your hand in, right? And, and people sometimes do that. But when, when that happens, you slightly turn, and they will le release your hand. Okay. I've actually never had that happen. I never shook hands with Donald Trump. However, you know those people that grab your hand and go like, like really tight? Yeah. Well, if you turn your hand, they, they like, what's Works happening? that too? You know, when they yeah. shake, you know, I guess they're already trying to show me that they're the boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just give it a turn. And they go like, huh? Well, I can't wait and to try that. your hand. Yeah. You're the guys? Or how about, I hope none of you guys have those wimpy ones. Ugh. The fishy <laughs> hand. <laughs> I think our group yeah. is too, too astute for that, but. Um, there are a lot of those in the universe, and now it's your job to get to all of them and cure them from that. Because you're, you, I try never to think negative, but when they, that when you get that fish hand, you just kind of go bloop 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 in your true, true. Those, um, first impressions. Yeah, the as they say, there's never a second moment for a first impression. That is not always true, but never judge the book by the cover. But uh, sometimes, you know, when you get a fishy no, hand. Yeah. Who's that handsome man? <laughs> <laughs> you know what Joseph McClendon used to do? What? He would say, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, I have seen that. I have seen that. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. What's so the best advice you've ever gotten? Please? Best advice you've ever gotten. Um, the best advice is I don't do it. <laughs> I think nah. people telling you not to have made you just go for it more. No, the best advice I ever got is um, be authentic, be you, be you, be, be authentic. You. Oh, be authentic, uh huh. And that's what I say to people as well just be you, don't fake it until you make it because your body will never lie. So when you say something to somebody and you use your body language partially to convince somebody about something, but that's not really the truth, the rest of your body will say differently. And the subconscious mind of that person will detect it. And it's that subconscious mind that will give you that feeling like, I don't know what it is, but I don't really trust that person. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. Something is not really clicking. And that's when your gut feeling is talking to you. And your, subcon your subconscious will absorb it anyway. There is, so let's say we have two brains. So this is person A, person B. And person A says to person B something, right? And mm -hmm. what happens is that there's the verbal communication. There's mm -hmm. the nonverbal communication, okay? Mm -hmm. The verbal communication is only 7%. So whatever I say to you is only 7% of our communication. The rest is nonverbal. Oh, yeah. I show it like this. There's a reason why. 7% is 40 bits of data per second you're transferring. So when I speak to you, I transfer 40 bits of data per second. 
But when I speak to you, I also use my body language and my intonation, my tonality. Because if I would speak in this Zoom call, we're going to have an exciting uh, Zoom call, the ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be super unboring. <laughs> You'll fall asleep, right? So tonality. So when you use your body language, I use the bottom part just to make the, the difference. It's 93% nonverbal. You transfer 40, not 40 bits of data per second. You transfer 40 million bits of data per second. So when I say something to, to you, uh, Cynthia, and I use my hands and I use my tonality, right? That information comes, will arrive in your brain, right? My subconscious information will arrive at your subconscious. The conscious, the verbal will arrive at your conscious. It will be uh, processed in your brain and come back to me with an answer based on what I asked you or told you. That's why it's been said that your outside world is in, flect, in fact a reflection of yourself. Because you say something with a certain amount of body language, tonality, and verbal communication, it is being processed and it comes back to you. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is the best advice I ever got and I'm giving is, let me give you a different example. When you have your hands like this, a lot of speakers have their hands like this, like, like this or like this, it doesn't matter, but like this. So the, the fingertips yeah. together and the thumb together, right? And they speak and like, hey, listen, can I tell you something? I'm now exaggerating again because I want, my I want to make my point. Yeah. Like, hey, I have something very special to tell you. Watch my hands. And uh, it's, it's, if you don't follow my advice, you'll be in trouble. If you follow my advice, you'll have an amazing life. If you do that, that is expressing a whole an amazing amount of confidence. People who do this have an amazing amount of confidence. They know what they're talking about. They are well prepared. They have a, an answer ready for every question you have when they have their hands like this. And I showed that to somebody who, who was doing videoing about real estate in, 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 uh, in Birmingham, in the North. And, and the first recording they did, he went like this. Yes, uh, people, I have to... Uh... And I told him, I said, Stop doing this. You look like a clown. It's not because I told you you have to exaggerate, right? And, and he says, yeah, but, but what should I do then? I say, act natural. Be you. Don't fake it. Because it, it, yeah, it, we all know that saying, fake it until you make it, right? But your body doesn't fake. So right. what, my, what I explained earlier, that my nonverbal will come on your uh, subconscious mind so from my subconscious mind to your subconscious mind the verbal goes from my conscious to your conscious be processed but if my non-verbal communication doesn't really match my verbal right your subconscious will say eh, something is wrong so it's very important to be authentic and to not fake it until you make it be authentic and if and if and if people don't like you because you're too authentic they're not meant to be in your space. Mm. 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 You don't have to agree, but that's my point of view. Um, what are some misconceptions people have about you and your industry? It's got to be hard to say, hey, I teach a new language. <laughs> uh, I don't experience that. I never had that experience. No? Because I, I, I actually feel like it should be one that you should check. You know, um, I was filling out a form recently and they wanted to know my languages. And, and I feel like I should read the book and study it and add uh, body language to the list. It wasn't even a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I don't really have that yeah, experience. I mean, you know, I was I was with Jack Canfield in, in London, had a lunch with Jack and from Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yeah, and we had a conversation about levels of consciousness. And, you know, it's like a pyramid. And most of the people, 80% of society lives in the survival mode, you know, with the, with the how do you call that? The lizard brain or the brain that reacts and stay, instead of acting, they react. They react to everything that happens is a reaction, survival mode, right? But once you start growing in levels of consciousness, there's less and less people. The higher you go, the higher the quality of the conversations and the higher the quality of your outcomes. And I had to learn that myself as well. Um, we all go through phases in life. But the more I started learning this, for example, I met with the Dalai Lama in 2006. 
I met up with the guy. It was such a beautiful experience. Um, I learned so much from that person, Dalai Lama. People, some are pros or are, some are saying, yeah, I don't know. But I learned so much from the guy. Once I started applying what Dalai Lama told me, I went through a higher level of consciousness. I was conscious about it. I, I, I felt it. Then I started studying Tony Robbins. I started studying Joe Dispenza. I started studying all of these people, what they had in terms of content, like Brian Tracy, or Jack Canfield, name it. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then you start growing a level of consciousness. So to come back to your question, do you ever have a misconception? No, because I don't attract these people anymore. So inquiring minds want to know, what did the Dalai Lama tell you? What did you learn? <laughs> there was a there was there was a report. He says, uh, "Can I, I can I ask you a question?" He says, "You can I ask me any question." And that reporter, the uh, the interviewer, asked him a question, and Dalai Lama started laughing. And he says, "Why are you laughing? Why are you not answering the question?" He says, "You are asking me a question. You already know the answer, but you want to hear it from me, right? And you are like searing that question in such a way, so I will give you an answer you like." <laughs> Act normal. It's already crazy enough out there. That's what I learned from him. Act, be normal. It's already crazy enough out. With normal, I don't mean uh, don't go for your goals or don't go for your dream. Go for them, absolutely. But act normal. It's already crazy enough out there. If that makes sense. I don't know. That's what. I, that's the one thing I learned. The major thing I remember from him. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. And it's pretty basic, you know, it's not really yeah, it makes perfect sense. And then <laughs> and you went to India to see him for this piece of knowledge that you knew in your heart the whole time. Right. Nope. 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 He came my to dad. Your... No, my dad died in 2002. Um, and um, and I went uh, to the, you know, the last greeting. So before they close the coffin. So I went to to that uh, I call it an event. Right. The whole family is there. And then it's the last reading. And I went to, to see him and I said, um, I'm going to tell you two things. And uh, when you hear me, when you can hear me or not, I'm going to achieve every single dream in my life. Period. And I'll see you on the other side. That's the second one. And I left. Hmm. And I started meditating because when I was 11 years old, I received a book from my parents. And it was about the Dal De Ching. I don't know if you know the Dai Le Ching. It's a, it's a certain way of thinking. It's Wayne Dyer talks a lot about it, and uh, Dal De Ching. It's a it's a yeah a mixture of of uh, certain ways of thinking, Confucius and and I got that book and I started reading it and I was only eleven. Yeah, very young. What parent gives your kid who is eleven years old a book about Dai Le Ching? Very Gets smart. One. Then I started studying Deepak Chopra and a Wayne Dyer at a very young age. And I said, wow, these guys are inspiring me. I want to know more. I started buying books from the Dalai Lama. I started buying books from all these spiritual leaders. And some were very known, some very unknown. And what happened is that when I, when I left my, my dad, the last greetings, I said, I'm going to achieve every single goal or dream that I have here in my mind. And one of them... I wanted to meet up with the Dalai Lama. I wanted to meet with him and I wanted to have a conversation with him. The second thing that came late, that was before the Dalai Lama, I wanted to meet with Tony Robbins and I wanted to work with Tony Robbins. And everybody said, you're nuts. I said, thank you. I love you too. I ended up working with Tony Robbins, right? And the second thing, the Dalai Lama, it took me four years to meet him. And what happened, I meditated about it. I meditated about it. I meditated about it. I prayed for it. And all of a sudden, after two years, I said, this is it. I'm fed up with this. If I meet him, amazing. If I'm not meeting him, amazing. And I left the whole thought. Two years later, during Father's Day, one of my daughters says, hey, dad, happy Father's Day. Give me a hug. I have a little present for you. And she gave me an envelope. Now, my kids did not know about that Dalai Lama story. They did not know at all. Huh. And I opened up that envelope. Guess what was in the envelope? A two tickets for a meet and greet Dalai Lama in Belgium, by the way. And you were there already. What a great and daughter. I was, there. Woo. I was there. So 
the universe is 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 amazing. Yes. And these are real stories. Right. I still have those tickets. And the thing is, what you put out there will come your way when you are ready for it. And the more you prepare and the more you focus on things and the more you, you pray, you meditate, you ask the universe, you send out these vibrations, that energy on a certain frequency, things will happen before you know it. I dreamed about going to Thailand, never been to Thailand. A year later, by thinking about Thailand, 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 and don't ask me why Thailand, but I wanted to taste like Asian food. I want to, I want to experience that. I was with uh, the guys from Success Resources in Singapore and the brother of the lady who runs the company calls me, Renee, would you like to speak in Asia in a couple of months from now? I said, oh, absolutely, man. And he put the phone down. I was going to ask where in, in Asia because Asia is big, you know, it's huge. Yeah. And I tried to call him back and I couldn't get him on the line. And 14 days, two, two weeks later, he called me back. Renee, you still want to speak in Asia? I said, absolutely, Douglas. But where in Asia? He says in Thailand. I said, excuse me? At that time, I started dreaming about visiting Australia. Months later, guess where I arrived? Australia. In Australia. I got stuck for five months in Australia because of COVID. There was no planes coming back to London. So, do you, you know, watch out what you ask for. Um, that probably has nothing to do with body language, but watch out what you ask for because you're going to receive it sooner or later. Hear that, everybody? Ooh, only positive thoughts. <laughs> and if you manifest it enough, guess what? <clears throat> Definitely going to happen. Absolutely. Zena and I were talking about that today at lunch, as a matter of fact. She's in Washington, D.C. Hi, Zena. And we were talking about how important it was and how so many people are negative. Body language negative. Yeah. Uh, negatives, you know, and if you just, you know, smile at them and some of them, Oh, some of them go, and some of them you make their day like no one else did. It's just True. an amazing little thing to walk down the street, and go hi, 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 and you just yeah. the responses are, and they're better on the weekend. <laughs> People are more solid Monday from Friday. I'm like, oh, your poor lives. Oh, yeah. so who else has on your list to see you? So you saw Tony Robin. You managed that. You did. Who's your next person you want to see that's living, or did you wish to see that's already gone? Um, I always dreamt of meeting Wayne Dyer and I was going to meet him and a couple of months later he died. So I was not able to, to meet him. That was one of the people I really, really, really wanted to meet. What's on my bucket list? And I will definitely do that. I think it's a September is Joe Dispenza. I really want to meet with Joe Dispenza. Um, I heard so many beautiful things about the guy. I'm listening very much, a, a lot to his uh, YouTube videos and stuff because it's very inspiring. Um, <clears throat> but I really want to meet him live. He just He just was in Cancun. Yeah, with I Kelly was there. Week. Yeah. Yeah. You were? No, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly was there. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly and, yeah. And, uh, and Pearl and and they were there and 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 they asked me, are you coming to? But I was so uh short notice. But I I hear I, I heard that he's going back to 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 the is it the US? I don't know, but in, in September or October, I definitely gonna be there. It's I want to ex the experience of a live session is completely different than a YouTube video. Um, we'll have to hear back from you when you go and see him and you can tell us how his body language makes him so dynamic <laughs> I will do that I will not promise promise I would, I would like um, to hear that so if you have the power to change one thing in the world what would it be and why could you could you repeat that if you have the power to change one thing in the world what would it be and why I would love to have people use their common sense <laughs> but for a lot of people common sense doesn't make sense if that makes sense unfortunately <laughs> if people would use a little bit more of their common sense the world would be completely different um i was asked in a certain country i'm not going to name the, the name of the country but i was asking in, in a country and i refused to go be because of the system because of you know and i'm going to keep it positive um but sometimes I refuse to go somewhere because of corruption, because of, you know, um, taking advantage. Um, and then I said, thank you. Um, I'm busy. Agenda is full. Don't get me wrong. I would love to come, but I'm sorry. Um, 
And when it doesn't make sense to me, it's a no-go. That's why I would love to come back to what you asked me. If people only had a little bit more common sense, use their common sense. But for a lot of people, common sense doesn't make sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does. Yeah. And how can you tell if someone has common sense through their body language? Can you tell or you just tell when they open their mouth? <laughs> or the verbal, they do? <laughs> as long as the, as the verbal and the nonverbal is matching, uh -huh. would I? So when, whenever the nonverbal is no is not longer matching with the verbal, that means there's a non-congruency. Um, that means it doesn't match. Then my alarm goes off. And then I start reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you know it's a bad business deal. How how is your business deal? You've got a big one going on in Dubai. Yeah. Um, but that's that has nothing to do with body language. In fact, this is um you got the job part. I mean, you you had to read the body language to make such a big commitment. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So what we're doing is um, the first thing that goes on now is in is in California on the ranch with Eileen. Uh, we're going to have a, a two day certified training in body language, two days in a row. California, Eileen, Avocado Ranch, beautiful place. I, I've never been there, but I heard so many positive oh, things about you going there. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It seems to be amazing that place. So for whoever thinks like, hey, I want to know more about it. Um, connect with Cynthia, connect with me. I mean, well, you'll find out anyway. But the, the thing we're talking about is the resort. So from childhood forward, I was in love with log homes. So ho houses they build with big trees, log home. Log homes, okay. Yeah, log homes. I don't know if I expressed that correctly, <laughs> but I was fell in love with these things because I went skiing for the very first time in Switzerland and I saw these houses and I, wow, one day I'm going to build one for myself. I, this is amazing. I fell in love with it. I lived in one uh, for a year. It was super amazing experience. I loved it. And then due to the fact I was in personal development for now for the last 27 years, I also studied um, uh, all kinds of uh, health courses, health training, uh, molecular medicine, um, the body language, then the personal development in general, all of these things together, combined with hospitality, combined with wellness, combined with luxury. I had a chat with a friend of mine in, in Dubai, in uh, Palm Jumeirah, and he says, Renee, you have to do something with this. Okay, and then uh, add up the engineering stuff, building roads and bridges and stuff. You have to do something with this. I said, yeah, but what? He says, why don't you start a center or something? I said, well, yeah, a wellness. Oh, wow, a village. Yeah. So we started brainstorming. Now the guy went on in his business and I started like doing research. So long story short, we're going to build a wellness and luxury resort uh, built on ecological thoughts. So uh, it's going to be carbon neutral, plastic neutral, self-sustainable, 20 log homes, wellness center in the middle, a luxury restaurant on top of that, a convention center where we're going to invite all kinds of speakers talking about health and, and wealth combined. It's going to be high security. Um, and we're now in the last straight line of start building it in, in uh, Ras al Khaimah, which is north from Dubai. And uh, in the mount, uh, it's in between the mountains and, and, and the ocean, in fact. It's a beautiful uh, uh, location. So, yeah, that's uh, it's one of my dreams come true. I'm <laughs> But it's yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's been a tough road, however, worth doing it because, again, you're serving humanity. Um, you serve the planet by building something who is carbon neutral, et cetera, et cetera. It's, uh, yeah, I just love it. I'm in love with that project. And I'm going to build it in, in uh, Dubai. I'm going to build it in, in, in Kenya, in Africa. I'm going to build it in Portugal uh, as well. And then we come to Florida and then probably, not sure yet, Colombia. So I'm going to build it all over the planet. Um, so, yeah. anyway, planning your masterminds, look at that. We could just follow him from Dubai to Kenya to Portugal. It's amazing. I have no idea what time it is. How are we doing? Oh, oh, questions? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so brilliant, isn't he? Isn't it a, like, woo? <laughs> um, make sure that anyone else has any more, any questions? Are there any yeah, questions please ask questions. Here? Yeah. I could talk I'll to be... Renee all night. Like we did at Kelly's house. You remember that, Kelly's place? Yes. 
yeah. before we knew it. I don't know what the time was, but it was pretty late that night. And, and we had like, whoa, how did that happen yeah. so fast? Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. I, and I think you covered so much. I don't see any questions that, that stand out in the chat for that anybody okay. has. I think okay, well then good. Uh, do we have a few more minutes? Can we just, okay. What would you leave everybody with um, to go forward besides going and picking up your copy of the book? And I, I saw on his website, he also has the um, retreat in California in there. So you could sign up through there and get a direct link. And um, I think you have courses in there too. Yeah. Then, I mean, there's nothing like, I mean, this stuff, nothing like seeing it in person, like the yeah. whole left and right thing. What we're going to have it's in California, practice. what we're going to have in California, Cynthia, is, 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 is that we're going to have, it's only for 20 people because there's no more seats, right? We are limited. And those 20 people who come will, most of them will be business owners or entrepreneurs or people. So we're going to, the, the networking that will be possible there is amazing. You're going to be able to network with like-minded people. If you have a certain business and there's another business you can combine forces with, with a person that you meet because you never know who you meet in, in a networking event. It's not a networking event. It's, it's, a, it's a training, but partially it's, it's networking anyway because there's going to be coffee breaks. There's going to be lunch breaks. There's going to be, I mean, there's one night included in the price in a hotel um, and it's not that expensive, uh, but it's not about that. It's about, you know, you go to an event, two-day event, you go away from everything and everybody, you're surrounded with high-quality people, as Les Brown would call it, HQ, HQP, high-quality people. <laughs> and and you can network and you can have an amazing time there. And yeah, I can only say if if you if you are doubting, just just come. It's it's a personal event. We're gonna chat, we're gonna ask questions, gonna you know, we're going to have a debate and there's not such a thing as stupid questions, only stupid answers. And, and if you have a question, just shoot your question. If I can help you out, if I can. And that's the beauty of a little group of 20 people. You can interact much more than when you have like with Robin's 10,000 people. In the room. You can't interact at all when you have only 20 people, high quality people in the room and you can exchange information. You can exchange your business. You can also exchange thoughts about body language. Uh, why am I always attracting that kind of person? Or why is this happening in my life? And then I will immediately say, because look at your body language. And you go like, huh? Yeah, there's exercises you're going to do. I'm not going to reveal everything here, but there's certain exercises that you're going to do during that those two days. You'll find out so much more about yourself that you never, never, never knew before. One of the exercises is, a face to face, right? And you have to do something, right? About 15 minutes. You interact verbally with each other. I'm not going to say what, right? You have to interact with each other verbally. You don't know each other. If there's a couple of men, man, wife coming to the seminar, we're going to put one there, one over there, right? So you can't know each other. So you do, do that interaction. There's two people on the other side analyzing their body language. Oh. And they're not allowed to speak. Right. So the only thing I do is take notes of what they see in terms of body language. So those two are interacting. Those two are reading. And then after 15 minutes, I say, listen, what did you see in this conversation in terms of body language? Please play full out. So I saw this. I saw that. And then I say to, the, to, to one person, to person A, for example, does that make sense? Were you aware of this? And I go, no, damn. And person B, did you know that what he just told you about you, what your 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 way of acting, the way you move, the way you say things, where are you aware of that? No, man, this is this is. And then I go to the other person, like, hey, what did you see in terms of body language in this conversation? Uh -huh. Right. And then they switch, but they have to do a complete different story. But again, interact. They read body language, and that is when you start finding out. Like, wow, how, I, how, how many years have, have I been doing this term, in terms of body language? That's the reason why I'm missing out on the contract. That's the reason I can't get into a relationship that makes sense. That's the reason why blah, 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 you know? And that's why the live sessions that I do all over the planet, when people go home, a week later, I get phone calls. Renee, I use this. I use that. And it's, it's working. I said, yeah, thank you. Wow, awesome. So the live sessions are, I mean, and 
as you, you were there at the Avocar Ranch from Eileen. It's an amazing location. I heard so many, so many positive things about it. It's yeah, beautiful. And on, on the landing page, I have a little video of, of Eileen's farm. So Excellent. I did put a, yeah. So you can go and check it out. It is a beautiful, beautiful spot. And I thank you so much, Renee. You are amazing. Thank you, you so much. Camp, we go, you are amazing. I am amazing. We are amazing. Eric, do you want to take us out? Please. Yes, I'm sure. I got, there was one more question in the chat, actually, oh, okay. about um, the similarities between the body language and NLP. Oh, that somebody asked. Yeah. So that's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, and it's a very short answer. Body language is a part of NLP. So for the for the people who don't know NLP, NLP is neuro linguistic programming. So NLP um, is neuro brain linguistic language, and how do you program that? And body language is a very small part of NLP. What I do with body language, I extract it. I don't know if that's an answer to the question. For yeah, I don't know who I, asked the question or yeah. Yeah, I think that was a great answer. Thank you for that. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is so awesome. I see this is like the tip, tip, tip first drop on the iceberg to everything that's beneath for you to learn and study. And all of us now are more aware of this, right? So now I'm like, oh dear. So <laughs> where do you put your hands in the podcast? I put them like this and I'm gonna go like this and like this. <laughs> I've got a question for you, Cynthia. Um, I have an answer for you, Renee. Okay, so Let's see if you can tell, <laughs> yes, where, where will people be able to find this podcast? This podcast will be this available. podcast. Where will people be able to find it? Um, absolutely, it will be on um, my YouTube. It will be in the Facebook group. It will be in Cynthia's Songs of the Sea. Um, we will be happy to send you it. Um, Eric will send it to you, so you can use pieces of it for your personal promotion. Um, where else will it be, Eric? Yeah, we'll also have it on Spotify on, as Cynthia said, YouTube, it'll be on her website as well. So anywhere that you can find podcasts, we'll, we'll have this posted. What a um, great conversation. We need to get this yeah. out there for sure. I'll, I'll share it everywhere. I'm on LinkedIn. I got 20,000 followers, so I'll put it there as well. So you never know how things, you know, is sharing is caring as they say, right? Well, so. you're, you're hitting a completely new tribe here. And all these people have more friends and more friends. And there's really, I don't know if you've joined Cynthia's Song of the Sea yet on Facebook. Cynthia's Song of the Sea. After joined this, a after lot this, of great after friends. After this Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure that you can get other um, ways to express yourself and let your word out because some of my people all have podcasts of their own. And oh, wow. you can be all over the world just by catching up with some of these people. And if anyone wants his information, reach out to me or reach out to him on his LinkedIn, his Facebook, his website. He has a very good little, he's in everything there. I don't think there's a social media. He's on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. He's of the, he's in every single platform. So you cannot not find him. I was in London with Gary V backstage and Gary Vaynerchuk, Gary V says, uh, if you're not on at least 10 social media platforms, you don't have a reason of existence in this industry. How many platforms are you on? I said on 27. Oh, I said, okay. <laughs> okay, maybe I need the list of 27. I'm obviously missing a few. <laughs> you know, I'm in Asia and Australia and I'm a bit everywhere. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. I want to sell my book in Asia and Australia and everywhere. <laughs> I'll share it with you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> if you need any beach time reading, it's summer, go to the ocean, pick them up. We're here for you. Thank and you so much. Fourth of July, isn't it? Pretty soon in, in the US? Yeah. July. It's a, our big Independence Day. It's a huge holiday. Okay. We wear red, white, and blue. It's a great, great book to make sure that all look at Jay's got his flag up. Ah. <laughs> uh, mine's on my front, a front awesome. of my house. I keep my American flag on the front of my house. And yeah. and uh um Zena has left, but she was in Washington, DC working on a bill getting passed for veterans, as a matter of fact, to help them with their home loans. Um, yeah. And it's amazing just trying to reach out and help all, all of humanity. And I wonder yeah. what kind of body language they use to see 347 people over in Congress. 
I served seven years and believe it or not, a lot of, I was call it lucky or not lucky. I, I'm not going to say it, but there's a lot of people who deserve far more better than uh, who served in the forces. It's, um, I saw things uh, horrible, but anyway, it's uh, well, Air Force family. My dad was a Lieutenant Colonel in the United States Air Force. And my little sister who I raised is a full bird Colonel in the United States Air Force. Wow. And they are amazing. They are amazing. Yeah. Yep. And I'm just the supporter. <laughs> count the children, count the footlockers, pack them, <laughs> pack, pack, make it home. <laughs> but where, where, where are you based, uh, Cynthia? Me? Um, I moved every two to three years. I'm in the East Coast of the United States, West Coast of the United States, all over Europe, East Africa, and the Seychelles Islands. Okay. But when I come visit you, where should I go? California? Oh, I'm in Annapolis, Maryland. Oh, okay. Annapolis, Maryland. The Washington, D.C. area, Baltimore. We can, wherever you are, we'll hit you up. Okay, I'll text you before coming. <laughs> Perfect. I look forward to it. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you everyone for joining. I hope you learned a lot and make sure you are doing the right thing in the right country. <laughs> As Tony Robbins would say, which means I love you. Oh, I do this. I love you. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Now yeah. do you do this way? This way. Okay. Is, yeah. I love you, right? Love you hey, too. Eric, thank you for your technical support, man. You did a great job. <laughs> of course, thanks for coming on. You two are going to have to do another one. And in the chat, I'll just let you know, there's a lot of people are saying they'd love to have you on their podcast in the chat as well. So we'll thank be in touch. <laughs> we're, we're helping you grow, grow your brand, grow Renee, and help you reach all those people so we don't have so many people without common sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia, for having me. I really appreciate that. I'm grateful, grateful, grateful. Thank you so much. Thank Very you. Very fun. Be good. Be safe. Make smart choices. We'll do that. Ciao. Because you're amazing. And you're amazing. <laughs> we are amazing. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Ciao.